last little sprint to make sure the legs are on fire and then assume their positions on the pitch. There's a lull around the crowd as they wait with anticipation for this Rugby Europe final. And as you mentioned earlier, Ian, this might kind of come down to points difference winning this uh, overall tournament here, the European uh, Rugby Europe Championship. Ireland at the moment taking the number one spot with this final still to be played and should France win this game, it means that they will end up with the same points, log points as the team of Ireland. And it seems at the moment it might come down to points difference here. So let's keep, an, keep an, a close eye on the result here. All that is of course speculation if Spain should win and it is a final. We do not know who will win. So let's not speculate any further. Let's just enjoy the rugby. And that kickoff has gone straight into touch. There will be a free kick in the middle for Spain, and they'll be quite happy with that for a start of this game. A little mistake from France, giving them an opportunity for a set-piece attack instead of a broken field attack. They opt for the scrum, as we've seen from so many teams this weekend. The scrum is good, and we see the first darting run, the first step from Spain. They keep hold of the ball, and they spread it right. That looked like it's connected with a French hand. The referee is playing advantage to Spain. They're attacking those outside shoulders, trying to get the two-on-one outside, and he steps inside, taken to ground just before the five-meter line and they play back to the wide right-hand side of the field. Sizing up both sides of that breakdown before deciding to play wide. That's almost the two-on-one there. That's almost not the gap that they wanted, the edge. Number nine goes into the middle just to show and go creating some uncertainty in the defence, and he takes full advantage of it. They don't need to open the door twice. Yeah, beautiful sevens rugby there behind Spain. But exactly how you want to play, they move them from left to right, all the way back from right to left. And when they went back the other way again, of course, France were thinking, hey, we need to cover the spaces outside. And what happened? They over-tracked, over-moved, moved too much on the out to, move, to get to the outside edge. And the space opened up on the inside for Spain. That's exactly how you think about rugby when you think about sevens. Make them move, make the defense work hard. and. If you can keep the ball through two to three phases, you will find yourself with opportunities, and that's exactly what happened for Spain. Absolutely, Melvin. Lovely sevens rugby from Spain. They've been doing it all weekend, and now this is exciting. How can they build on this? Not the best of kickoffs. It's just come off the side of his boot slightly, going a little bit too deep, giving France a chance to really attack without much pressure from that kickoff. Good fend. Good pace, he's been doing this all weekend. We know him already. He is dotting down in the corner, like I said, not for the first time. Arfoyle. Yes, number seven, Gregor Arfoyle, just doing a good job there. Just using his speed, understand good awareness there of where the touchline is and just speeding away. Spain will not be happy with that. They, they had them covered. It looked like they had them covered initially, but a good pass there onto Gregoire uh, Arfoil, and he used his speed just to beat the Spanish player on the outside. So Now, how crucial could that be in the result of this game? The kick has just drifted right, wide right of the posts, so it's 7-5, those two points missing from France. You have the feeling they just leveled it up, but in actual fact, they haven't because they've missed the kick. Yeah, every point counts in these finals, so let's see if uh, Spain can hold on to this lead. 
good contest from France off their own kickoff, regaining possession of the ball. Melvin keeps talking about the importance of possession. I'd like to mention that again. France now have it. Moving the ball well, looking for space. Spain keeping the control and defence. That's very good defensive play, but look at that step. And he's got an edge. He had almost no room to manoeuvre there. Unreal speed. There's just no substitute for speed. Yeah, sometimes, exactly. You, you, you can have all the plays you want. You can have all the set-piece plays and things that you want to do, but you need some of these players who can just understand, just use their skills, their individual skills, their speed, their awareness, their creativity, and... Good carry there by the French player. I believe the number six, Lucas Odart, coming away there with a good score. Yeah, and this time the conversion is good for Mignot. And France take a convincing lead, or a deserved lead, rather. Only five points in it here. And Spain again with these crisp passes. They really can move that ball so well. Almost better than any team I've seen this weekend. Referee says play on. So France now have possession. They're working hard around that breakdown. And that's got them back in possession. On the front foot. That's a knock on. The advantage is over, says the referee, so Spain must attack now from deep, and they do. They put the foot down on the gas, get on the inside shoulder. Oh, he's being chased down very well by Mignon. And he makes it before the try is scored, but the continuity is good, and Arfoil gets the try, uh, sorry. Bay gets to try for Spain. Breathtaking sevens here, played by both teams. And it, it, it meant that Spain had to come all the way from their own 22 to make something happen here. And then a good breakaway try there by Spain. So what an evenly contested match we have here on our hands. Yeah, very evenly contested. I have the feeling that France are almost dominant in the breakdown, but that Spain, when they move the ball, just look that little bit more dangerous. So it's really, they have their own strengths, they have the areas in which they're finding dominance. It's just a question, how does that balance out over, over 14 minutes? Spain got that kick over, the conversion, they lead 14, 12 at the moment. How important can that con conversion be at the end of this game? Yeah, these two points, they could make all the difference. It's a bit of tit for tat at the moment. And a good kickoff. It's very contestable. They rise. It goes off the back of the Frenchman into the hands of the Spanish. And they break through again on the way to try. Look at him. Pop those legs. He won't stop. Is he held up? He looks to me as if he is. And the referee and his assistants agree with that decision. He is held up. But what leg drive, Melvin. He just didn't stop. You're waiting for the tackle to happen. Yeah, by the player number seven there from Spain. You almost could not believe it. He's, he's not the biggest of players. In fact, looking over the field, probably one of the smallest players on the field there. But the way he drove his legs there and keep on, kept on fighting, he really deserved the try for that. But unfortunately, held up in the in goal. So, no score. Scores remain at 14 12 for Spain. Good first half. Wow, what breathtaking rugby. I've said it so often this weekend, I'll say it again. Just exhausting out there. These men are working so hard for each other. Ha, that could also be very important, though, getting that held up try disallowed or not being awarded at the end of that half, Melvin. They do still have the lead, but how many chances do you get against a team like France? You really need to score them when you can. Yeah, you do feel that was a... especially winning that ball back there and off the kickoff. If they could have, you just, you just feel that if they got that score, they would have put Fran the, the French team under huge amounts of pressure coming into the second half, because that's a really a two-point lead. Would have taken them up to a nine-point lead, so two-point, two-score, a two-score game there then for France. So that means pressure on them. They need to then, they have to cut out all the mistakes. They have to make sure they keep the position, and there's so much pressure on them. So 
Spain picking up the the the, the intensity here yeah, towards the end of the second half, first half. So yeah, pro pro promising, promising first half from both sides. Actually, I reckon they'll both be happy because they're both so confident in their skill sets and in their own style of play. Going into this second half, they will fancy themselves for the victory for the cup. And we're good to go once more. The last of the officials leaving the pitch. The water carriers as well. The sun is coming out once more, burning through the moist sky. Thirsty work out here today. The fans are staying hydrated. Yeah, just getting back to the fans, how wonderful it is not for the Hamburg fans, the German fans to have this level of rugby right at their doorstep and that's a good take from that kickoff in france coming under real pressure and switching the side of attack instantly finding space there's not much out there the spanish defense works so hard to shut down any spaces little inaccuracy there we we'll have a scrum for the Spanish side. And Spain making changes early in this second half. They want to give themselves the best chance of scoring first, so they want those fresh legs on now and not as a reaction to something that France might do later. Yeah, three days of rugby here. Almost five o'clock in the afternoon here in, in Hamburg. Players have been playing since Friday afternoon, <laughs> you feel. Getting the outside shoulder, getting the fend in, half break here and good continuity. The support was lightning fast. They switch back to the left-hand side. Again, that lovely little stutter step. Good variation in the game from Spain that they've got a clear, clear guideline to how they play it, but with a good variation within those guidelines. That looks to me to be a good jackal. The referee likes what he sees. The Spanish player is not released, so it's a penalty for France, and they go quickly. Taking the speed out again. Now, the supporting player quite clearly just went straight off his feet, sealing off the contest, preventing a contest from Spain. That is not legal, and the penalty goes to the men in red, yellow, and dark blue. Now you feel that France wasted a good opportunity there. Somehow the ball carrier decided to go route one. They had they had the space out wide they they've just won the ball back but not making good use of the ball and spain still in the half of france and now with a good opportunity to put the ball into a line out and let's see where the ball goes out taking them up to just around about the 22 in fact they are they're taking the 22 as the middle point of this line out right in front of us here in the commentary box they are big old men and they shift the ball, Spain. One of the few poor passes I've seen from Spain today. And again, wide to wide, look at it. Taking it on physically, and that is a dominant tackle. And he gets up into his feet, tries to counter Ruck, but the ball is already gone. What a battle we have here. And it's a race for the line. Will he get the finish in the corner? It's a heroic tackle. I think he's got him out of touch. I think that's not been grounded. We'll see what the referee thinks. Yes, the flag is up. Two huge moments there by France. The number eight, Jura Simon, which I called him before the game. Huge man, the number eight, making that first huge hit, working hard, trying to get the ball back. But Spain kept the ball, then made their way again, got the ball to space. The number one, Enrique Bolinger, is getting an opportunity there. But then another huge defense there by France to 
tackle the man into into touch. Yeah, so Spain getting a try at the end of the first half that wasn't a try, and now just getting knocked out at the corner flag. They'll be gutted. That two potential scoring opportunities that they've now missed. How crucial could that be? France on the attack now. They look good. They are fast. They are moving the ball with ease. Huge mistake there by France. Ball not going to hand in the player, playing it from an offside position. Spain live to fight another day, Melvin. And the old banana kick on the outside of his foot. He has made incredible territory with that. That's gone from wide on my left side to wide on my right side. I can't estimate how many meters, but it's probably around about the 60. This match is More. tensing up here. Three and a half minutes gone. More changes here for Spain. Trying to maintain that intensity by keeping fresh players on the pitch. You have five substitutions you may use. And Spain moving the ball with ease again. Real speed and another dominant hit. I think that was your man again, Melvin. Yeah, your assignment coming back there with a huge hit. Probably. Jeez, he's an imposing figure. Nice strength, gets his knee down, casual as you like. And Spain go again, another huge hit. This time it goes backwards, and we have the score this time. Almost a little too casual from the player as he got over the line. Getting put under pressure, almost held up by the French defenders, but Juan Ramos has scored again for Spain and they extend their lead now to seven points, potentially nine, and that is a big, big moment. Yeah, there was a moment there where it felt, felt to me like the French players thought they would, because of the awkwardness of that pass, it looked like it could have gone forward just from, from their view, I guess. Um, so everyone stopped. Yeah, they almost just took the ball off the cast, didn't they? Yeah, and the ball bounces right for the Spanish player, the number four, uh, Juan Ramos, and he just ran in almost untouched. And uh, yeah, the French players will not be happy about that. They should have, could have reacted a bit better to that. Uh, it's nine points, the lead now. That means a two points, a two score uh, lead. With one and a half minutes to one play. One and a half minutes to play. It could be Spain's day. That might be a little bit poetic. France taking the final in the women's and Spain in the men's. Splitting the spoils here in Hamburg. A lovely defense from Spain. Not wanting to allow France any space to move with. Another strong collision. Good skills from the big man. And France win a penalty. They're not out of this just yet, but the score must come in the next seconds to give them a chance of getting a second one. Here we go. It's a knock-on from Spain. That'll be a strum for France, but that'll eat up so much time that I think I don't... I don't just don't see it happening anymore, Melvin. Yeah, it's scoring two, two tries with only 40 seconds to go. I believe that scrums, the setting down for that scrum is probably going to take 15 seconds off the clock. So you will find yourself with only 10, 15 seconds to play. And so you need two scores. You need two scores. So I'm afraid that that's not going to help fr France. And All we'll credit to both teams, Melvin. I know the game's not over yet. We still have the last actions to see, but all credit to them. It's been one heck of a fight in this final. And I think Spain really do deserve a victory. But look at that creativity, that execution. That is a try to be proud of. And if they refuse to take the conversion, they can just take the kickoff from the middle of the pitch. He will take the conversion. OK, and we're still within time. There will be another kickoff. It's a two-point game. Even a drop goal, Melvin. 
it doesn't, see, it doesn't happen very often, Seb, but even a drop goal the, would be enough. <laughs> that's how quick the game changes. We were just talking about how little time is left, 30 seconds. We, we often see that we should know better. We've, we've seen this so many times in we're our own coaching, not in our profits. own teams, and just watching rugby all over. And, um, but Spain secure Spain the ball, it. and they will only need to kick it off the field. They do. The ball is off the pitch. It ends 21-19. Frustration for France. Immense frustration. We called it when they missed that conversion, Melvin. We said, how important could that be? It was the difference between the two sides in the end. Three tries, three tries, two conversions, three conversions. Breathtaking. We, just, we called that earlier, isn't it, how important that one kick, that conversion there. Spain getting all, it's just, as you mentioned, all their kicks, all their conversions. And that's the one, the, the, the difference in the scoreline here. So what a, what a lovely day for Spain. They really, truly deserved it. When they beat Germany on the first day, yes, it was a close game, but everyone felt, mm, you know, Germany could go all the way here as well, even though they lost. But Spain showed in that game exactly what they are made of and what they could do. And then throughout the tournament, they sometimes had difficult